Hello, welcome. Take a moment and try this problem out. Pause the video, give it a shot, and then press play so we can solve it together. Okay, so in, in this problem, I think it's interesting, they, they ask us to sketch at least one cycle of a sine curve with these properties. The amplitude is 2, so that's the distance from the midline. A midline at y equals negative 3 halves, or negative 1 and a half, that's the literal middle or average of the function and a period of 2 pi. So it's going to take 2 pi, let's say, radians to complete one cycle. And they asked us to sketch this, which I thought was interesting because it, for me that just makes it a little bit unclear as to how detailed does it need to be. So what I would do, I'm just going to pull up the line tool right here. I'm going to start making some of the lines I need. You want to use a ruler for this. So first I'm going to draw the midlines at negative 1.5. Uh, let's say this is negative 1, so this is negative 2, negative 1 and a half is right in the middle. So that's my midline right there. And the amplitude is 2 above that. So that's going to bring me, let's say this is 1 up here, and I'll come back and label this in a moment. That is 1. Nope. You know what? This line tool is just a little funky. So I'm going to go right to the pen. And approximate. So here's positive 1, here's negative 1, here's negative 2, so negative 1 and a half is right here. This is the midline here. This is my line. Okay, so that's at y equals negative 1 and a half, that's the midline. The amplitude's 2, so it goes up 1 and a half and then another half right here. So this, this is a little boundary, this is the top of the of the curve that I'm drawing. This is at one half. And it's a little sloppy. And if that happens in the regions, uh, you can just label it and you should be fine. I'm going to fix it for you though because I don't like how that looks. And I'm going to move this one up just a little bit right there. So it kind of matches this one as well. So this, this right here for me, I like to mark this because this is the top of the graph, the upper boundary, and the lower boundary, that distance right there, is the amplitude is also one and a, is also two down from negative one and a half. So it's going to go down to negative two and a half. Here's negative three. It's going to go down to negative three and a half. So it's two above and then two below. And the function is going to live between these two right here. That's at y equals negative three point five, and here's y is equal to positive zero point five. This is negative 1.5 in the middle. And let me look at the distance here. This is just a little bit too far down. So let me, let me bring that up. Oh boy. This is, uh, I'm not too happy with this work. Let's just go like that. It looks a little bit better. Yeah, it looks better. Okay. So my spacing up, what's the sketch? Now, I'm leaving it sloppy like this because I don't feel like redrawing it, but I'm showing you that this is this is actually true. If you label things like this, they're going to understand what you meant, and then um, they're going to realize you know what's going on. So in this case, uh, so far we have our midline, and now we need to work with our amplitude and period to finish the graph. And in this case, I like to start by graphing where one cycle ends, in this case at 2 pi radians. And then I go back and I mark the halfway point at pi. And then this halfway point, that's pi over 2. And this halfway point, which is 1 and a half or 3 pi over 2. Those four increments are going to be enough to draw this out. So it starts here. It's sine, so it starts in the midline. And then at this first increment at pi over 2 rads, it's going to go up to its maximum. And it comes back down to the midline at pi. It goes down to the minimum at 3 pi over 2, and then back up to, to the midline at 2 pi. It's going to be this right here, and we've got one cycle of the wave, and this is definitely labeled clear enough. Notice that some of my points are a little bit off and sloppy. If that's the case, if you're like, ah, oh, I don't know if they're going to give me credit for it, label it. Point to it just like this, any point that you're unsure about, and, and give it a label. So this is 3 pi over 2, and then negative 3.5. Now down here in part B, you might not have noticed this, but it says explain any differences between a sketch of this graph here from part A and this equation, right? Now these equations, 
I'm gonna rewrite that in case it's it's too large, too small to read. Let me erase it though. The blue. This is gonna be our new equation in green. So I'm gonna write that equation here. So y equals twice the sine of x minus pi over three, and then minus three over two. So I'm not gonna explain much of the theory here, maybe a tiny bit, but um, I want to point out how to solve this, and then if, if you want more details on what's going on here, let me know. But basically, this number right here is uh, tells you the amplitude, because you take the absolute value of this number, and that's the amplitude. Now, the absolute value of 2 is 2, so this graph has the same amplitude. I'm going to put a check there. Same amplitude. This right here, for any function, um, like we call this the amplitude here. This is a vertical dilation for any function. Well, this is the midline specifically for sine and cosine or a vertical translation. And um, in this case, this negative 3 over 2 is our midline already. It's the same. Nothing's different there. The only difference is what you see happening here. And this is a horizontal translation or a phase shift. And when you subtract from a horizontal, you're going to be adding to the inputs of your graph. So it's going to be a phase shift to the right by pi over 3 rads. So imagine that I had everything is the same, but we're doing a phase shift by adding pi over 3. That's not so easy to graph because of the increments I've chosen. But pi over 3 is, um, as you know, is a little bit smaller than pi over, pi over, um, is <laughs> um, pi over, oh boy, pi over 3, excuse me, is smaller than pi over 2. So it's going to move over a little bit, let's say about, change my tool, a little bit this way. That is not what I'm trying to move. This is. So it would be a little bit of a phase shift there, right? So something like that, it was going to the right. And that's what that subtraction does. Now you could just say it's a phase shift to the right by pi over 3 radians or horizontal translation to the right by pi over 3 radians. And if you're wondering, yes, if this was if this was a plus, it would go in the opposite direction. All right. I hope that helped.